But wait, there's more. Uh, oh, there was how Republican House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer responded to Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. It started when Congressman Moskowitz asked the Kentucky Republican about a Daily Beast story published last week asserting that Congressman Comer loaned his brother $200,000 as part of a land swap deal. For context, Comer has baselessly accused President Biden of engaging in shady business practices by loaning the same amount of money to his brother, James Biden. Comer denied any suspicious activity and then went off on Moskowitz. I went to the bank and I borrowed money and I bought that land. I didn't get wires from Romania, China. My family doesn't get wires, okay? Never loaned my brother money don't have an LLC, but you and Goldman, who is Mr. Trust Fund, continue to try Recla to... Reclaiming my time. No, I'm Re not going to give you your time back. We can stop the clock. Re you all continue to... You look like a Smurf here just going around and all this stuff. Now, listen... Re Mr. Chairman, you no, have... No, I'm going to tell you no, no, something. Hold on. If we're, you if we're not on time... We you continue to spew disinformation. You, you, you have you gone on TV and you said the president did something you illegal. You're doing stuff with your brother. The American people have the same questions. Why should they believe you? Why you should they believe you? Why should they believe you? you? There's, there's a different rule for you the president. There's a different rule for you. Why should they believe what you're saying, Mr. Chairman? Why? You go on Fox News and say loans you and deals are a way to evade taxes. We don't know that's what you're doing or not. We don't know. We have no idea. We're supposed to take your word for it. But when the president well, says something, you've already been proven a liar, Mr. Moskowitz. What's that? You've already been proven a liar. Today. Who's proven me a liar? You? Yes. Your word means well, nothing, Mr. Chairman. Go to my hometown. There's a camera crew there today, an opposition research crew there today. Mr. To Chairman, this seems, to have gotten under your, this seems to have gotten under your skin. I'll pay I mean, for your I, ticket. I, I, I think the American people have lots of questions, Mr. Chairman, and perhaps you should sit maybe for a deposition. I, would, we can I will be questions. happy. I will sit with Hunter Biden and Jim Biden, and we can go over our LLCs. I, I, oh I, I, I can, I can tell you when I was there not so long ago, Chairman never acted. They just didn't take the bait like that. And Willie, for Comer... To call anybody a Smurf proves only one thing. Says they look like a Smurf. They obviously don't have mirrors in the Comer household. Well, uh, I just, it's hard to know what to say watching that back and forth. Again, um, Brez, this gets back to the investigation. Comer is leading uh, into the Biden family, into Hunter Biden, and he has said himself, well, we got an awful lot of smoke, no fire yet. And I guess when you don't have any fire, you engage in fights like this as a distraction, perhaps. Oh, he's gone pretty much accused uh, Biden of bribery. I mean, if you, I mean, I've interviewed Comer. He, he's pretty much said it uh, right out. Hasn't proven it though, um, is what I mean. Yeah, well, he has not. No, of course, they have not proven anything at all. But he, I mean, he clearly believes it. The Speaker Mike Johnson seems to see think you know uh, uh, Biden has done something wrong as well. I do think the tension you've seen in House Republicans, you've seen this since January. This entire Congress, they had this razor thin majority. Sense. Remember that? Remember the stuff on the floor with Mike Rogers and Matt Gates and you know Richard Hudson, uh, uh, another congressman had to pull Mike Rogers the, the, from Alabama away from Gates when we saw that fight in January. We've seen this throughout this Congress. Uh, uh, Republicans are fighting over the future of their party, the future of their parties at stake yeah. here. And it's the, the tension inside their party. Their enemies, in fact, they're, they're, they're enemies, they seem more, you know, the moderates in their own party are more of an enemy than the Democrats are, which is just, you know, that's what it's become. And, and, and by, by moderates, actually, there's so few moderates there, if any, you're really talking about people who don't want to turn, burn the institution down. I, moderates, when I was there, meant something completely different. Even 10 years ago meant something completely different. Now what moderate means is somebody that doesn't want to burn the place down, destroy the institution. A moderate is somebody who wants to get things done. I do have to say, just to follow up on Comer, uh, Comer's proven absolutely nothing. It's like, again, going back to the Wall Street Journal editorial page about a month ago.
No. Said Comer, it's all smoke, no fire. Right. And he can keep searching. They suggested keep searching, see if you can find anything. But time after time after time after time, it proves he has nothing. And in fact, he, you know, he's like, I hope, I hope we can find something. It's, uh, he's and yet just they've a false launched narrative. an impeach impeachment inquiry with absolutely no evidence. And they've admitted. Yeah. They've admitted. They make the the charge. And they don't have any of the evidence. And the Republic, the potential and most likely Republican nominee for president is the leader of all of this type of behavior. He has opened right. the door to it. Claudia, we'll, we'll close this block with you. Final thoughts. Thank you for coming on. Um, but what do you make of this behavior in terms of the grand scheme of things and the direction of the Republican Party, its future? Yeah, it's, it's a very tough moment for Republicans, I agree. We've been seeing these struggles since the beginning of the year, and they've only escalated when we saw the speakership fight. It's so one reason I've been focusing on House Republicans and their intra-party fighting is because of concerns of physical altercations. It just seems like that's where this is all going. And so as stunning as yesterday was, it was not that shocking in the end. Right. That's what we keep saying. Yeah. Stunning, but not shocking. Day after day. Congressional correspondent at NPR, Claudia Griselas, and co-founder of Punchbowl News, John Brezhnehan. Thank you both very much for coming on this morning.